until uh, now, uh, Bill took you uh, around the whole process and uh, you had an overview about the whole process and we are now starting to dig deeper within each tree and over the days you will have a more profound hands-on understanding about the, the different tools. So we are starting with the gold tree, as you just got it by the general explanation. The gold tree is very interesting because it will feed the other trees. It is the central tool of the process and it will deliver a, a very important input to start the process. The gold tree as far as you know, we have a goal, we have critical success factors, and we have the necessary conditions. And uh, this is what Bill refers to the foundation system problem solving uh, process. This leads us to identifying what needs to, uh, to be changed, which is very important. And uh, this is also something that uh, Bill will stress all over the course, the real undesirable effect which is on the system. Don't forget we are considering the system level. Okay? And uh, not just pretty or incidental, uh, incidental aggravation. What does it mean? Well, when we talk about undesirable effect, Bill has a very specific definition of it, about it, which is it must hurt the system as a whole. It is not something that we as individuals do not like which could be at our level in uh, undesirable effect, but would not harm the system. The system does not care about it. So if I take a very stupid example, if I'm sitting in an office and I do not like the color of the wall, it's not likely that me not liking the color of the wall would affect the, the system. It's not very likely. Maybe my motivation would drop or something, but this would not harm very much the system. So what would harm the system is a true undesirable effect, and this would either prevent, you cannot read very, very uh, easily, this is the goal, yeah. so the system goal, and or the critical success factors. And as you know, as long as you do not achieve the critical success factors, no way to achieve the goal. So it's either one or the other. We need to achieve the critical success factors, they are required to, re to realize the goal. And the whole, the whole structure, including the necessary conditions, are the benchmark in order to achieve our goal. Okay? So if something goes wrong in this structure, we have the enablers not in place. And if the enablers are not in place, no way to get up to the goal. But don't confuse, as Bill said, it's not a domino effect. It's only enabling. It's not cause and effect, okay? But nevertheless, if you have one enabler missing, you won't be able to go to the next level. Right now, we have, let's say, an intention or an ambition, a vision to fulfill, something to attain, and uh, of course, we are not there now, so we can say we have a problem. And uh, well, to tackle this problem, we have to, to understand what really the goal is and what the critical success factors are. All right. So how do we determine <coughs> the system's goal, the real goal, and how to determine the critical success factors? And therefore, we have a nice tool, which is called the goal tree, and you have the father of the goal tree sitting in the room. And what is the goal tree? Well, you know it, but it's a repeat. It's a visual and graphic depiction of what you have to have with the goal on top, some necessary condition with a specific status which, which are called the critical success factors and then you have the whole structure of all the necessary conditions which are enablers from one level to the others and you have a whole structure which makes this, um, this uh, logical tree. So the goal is on the top, then we have a limited set of critical success factors which are key supporting necessary conditions. And we will come back several times on the definition of critical success factors. And uh, here you can see that there is a recommendation to limit their numbers. So the rule of thumb says three to five. So why three to five? Well, I'd like to say partly it's coming from experience, 
but also if you take time to consider. And the words are important here. If to achieve what the system is supposed to do and consider yourself as the owner or the founders of something and you have an ambition, you want to achieve this ambition, you have critical success factors and the words are important. So if your ambition, if your uh, vision is based on too many critical success factors, the chances of failure increase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you have to have a limited set of critical success factors. Another way I would like to propose uh, considering critical success factors is, uh, of course, you will have several definitions and they are all true and, uh, how to say, completing each other. But I would I generally uh, explain that to my customers. These are, let's say, the high-level dashboard for the system owner or the sponsor of the project, and he doesn't want to have a huge dashboard. He wants to get to the point and have an easy understanding, are we getting closer to the goal or not? And if we have three to five, we can handle, because you can assess, are we getting closer to the goal or not? If you have 20, as once I saw, 20 strategic streams in one uh, pharma factory. It has to be common. Yeah, and it was before I knew about uh, the logical trees, uh, otherwise I would have proposed to use them, but it was impossible to, to manage because it was a, re a project review mm. once a week, and you can imagine they had just time in the afternoon to go through one or two strategic streams so you never go through, through the whole cycle and they did in they essence, didn't if everything is critical then nothing is yeah. critical mm -hmm. yeah. and as you know now everything in the goal tree is related to the upper level by the relationship in order to achieve this I must have that and the necessary conditions are supporting the critical success factors and the critical success factors are terminal outcome just before reaching the goal Okay. In a sense, there are also necessary conditions. They have just this special status because they are the very last, let's say, milestone or outcome just before reaching the goal. All right, and they are very handy because, as you will, see, you will see afterwards, they summarize what is underneath. So this is also a good way to uh, to define a critical success factor. It's a kind of summary of all the structure which is beneath, and they provide. I'd like to say a, a handy uh, dashboard. And whether we are trying to build an aircraft or establishing a new business with a startup, this gives you the benchmark, gives us the benchmark, mm -hmm. what should be done in order to have the success we are looking for. But I'd like to say it's also a roadmap because as Bill said, it is sequential. sequential. You cannot jump in just uh, haphazardly uh, trying to fix some necessary condition. You have to start at the very bottom and then enabler after enabler. You must walk or work your way to the goal. Right? So it's a benchmark, it's a roadmap, and it's much more. So we have now our structure, okay? so you are quite familiar with, and, but we are not there, of course. We are not there, so we have a, a, a drift between what we want to achieve and what we actually have. So we have undesirable effect. Undesirable effect, well, the goal is not achieved or one or more critical success factors are not yet achieved. Okay? And these are elements which will feed the other trees. Knowing that at that moment we can see the effects, but we are not sure why it's not happening because we are dealing with complex systems which, as Bill said, can go quite deeply into the details. Mm -hmm. right? So we are not sure why we are failing to do or to achieve it, but at least we can see the effects. Let, let me point something else out. Yeah. The undesirable effects are undesirable only with respect to the benchmark established by the critical success factors and the goal. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, well, how many undesirable effects do we have in our system? And the answer is, the maximum number you have is the sum total of the critical success factors plus the goal. Mm -hmm. 
So in this case here, there are three critical success factors and a goal. The maximum number of undesired, system undesirable effects you could possibly have is four. Three plus one. If you had five critical success factors and a goal, the max you could have would be six. But think about this for a second. If you had six, or in this case, if you had four, it means your system is totally failing in all respects because you're not getting anything done right. In most cases, what will happen is you'll have two or three. And what will happen is a couple of those critical success factors will be working out okay. And the other one is not, and because the other one is not, you are not achieving your goal. So that means you've got two, one of which leads to the other. So we heavily advertised this uh, nice tool, which is the goal tree. And the question is how to construct one, All right? So before going to uh, rush to the post seats and have a structure done, we must first understand what is our system and what are the boundaries of the system. And this is very important. Why? Because we have to understand what is part of the system and what lays outside of the system. And there are two uh, notions which are very interest, uh, very important to understand. First, the span of control, which is what you have power upon. You have total control. You can decide within, within your span of control. And then second, as a concentric circle, this is a wider area, you have some influence within a sphere, so you can reach out with your influence, but you cannot totally decide because you depend on somebody else or some other department or some stakeholders, whoever. So you can influence in some, uh, in some aspects, but uh, you, cannot, you cannot totally control it. And what is not in the span of control and not in the sphere of influence is outside the system. And outside the system, we should consider it as, well, constraints or something we have to comply with. Mm -hmm. It's regulation, it's the weather, we cannot influence the weather, uh, it's the, the law, it's uh, many things which are totally uh, beyond on the, our control. And to make these things a bit more uh, concrete, well, you have here different systems which uh, we can, uh, how to say, we, we can fix the boundary quite easily. So for instance, if we consider the, the family being a system, you know well who among your relative belongs to the family, who does not. Uh, even there are maybe some gray zones, but usually you, you can draw the boundaries. We can have clearly city limits. We know when you are leaving the city and when you are in. The same for countries, usually. And even a company, you know where it stops, where you are at the supplier side or the customer side or inside the company. And even more specifically, this is uh, an overlapping of systems. And uh, I proudly present uh, the span of control of Mr. Bill Detman. Mm -hmm. which is this solid line here. In his house, he has total control of his favorite armchair. He never gives the keys of his car. You know now he has a Mercedes, so he has total control over his car. He can decide when to go to bed and when to get up. He can set the alarm at uh, leisurely. He can even uh, decide to have his favorite uh, rubber duck with him in the bath. And uh, he can decide if gardening is fun or is a chore and to do it or not. And this is the system home. But it is also part of the system he's working, the company is working for. Okay? And the span of control of Bill is, well, pretty limited to his desk. He can freely decide to have the mouse right side, left side, how to set up his desk. But that's probably nearly all. What you can have, both in the system house and in the system uh, company, he has some influence. So in the company, he probably have influence over some of his colleagues or some of his uh, uh, hierarchy. Uh, he can bring up good ideas which have influence or even maybe some decisions that can lead to influence something. In the house, well, 
they are shared resources, so he has to compromise probably with the other users or the, the other inhabitants of the, of the system hall. So he has some influence about uh, when to have dinner and uh, what to do with savings and so on, but not total control. Otherwise, maybe Mrs. Detmer will uh, uh, give him some bad time. And something he barely controls is his dog can try to influence him, but even there, he, t he told us he has some trouble. And, well, for all other things beyond work and a home, well, this is beyond the system. It's outside, and no way to influence the laws, the weather, whatever. So, why is it important to be clear about the, the boundaries of the system? So, uh, if we are coming back to uh, goal trees and uh, its components, well, the goal and the critical, uh, the critical success factors will not be the same if you consider your system to be in your span of control or sphere of influence, because you have, uh, how to say, nested uh, structures. So, if you consider what is it within your span of control, you probably will have your own goal. If you are going to tackle problems in within your sphere of influence, the goal is probably somebody else's goal, okay? And it's quite different than yours. Then you have the whole structure of the necessary conditions, and um, there is also something uh, Bill likes to remind. It's the definition of leadership. So it's about doing the right things compared to doing the things right. So doing the right things would be the definition of leadership, as for doing the things right would more be management. Okay. So uh, if you are in the span of control, you probably are looking for the right things to do. If you are in the other cases, you might be told to do the things right. Mm -hmm. This is one way of putting it. Maybe you have a, a oh, different, that's, that's different way. Very good. Then we are still circling around the goal tree. And uh, now, what is the system's goal? Well, as you already understood, it is one single and, as it's uh, written, overriding end for which the system exists. It is the ambition or the reason why the system was created. And, uh, well, who is legit to say what the goal is? So, in the, in the vision of uh, Bill, it's the owner or the delegates of the owner. So, of course, for very old company, the owner or the founder is no more there to, to dictate the goal, but he left a legacy. And also, the people taking over are carrying on with the vision, etc. And uh, he gave uh, several examples about uh, public administration or whatever, so somebody is defining what the, the, the goal is, okay. either the owner himself or somebody having authority to decide what the goal is. Then we go for the, the critical success factors. As we already mentioned, there are very high level terminal outcome, so in a sense there are necessary conditions with a special status. As I already said, there are some res result of the underlying necessary conditions. So this is another way to spot the, the critical success factors. As Bill often reminds, it's the last outcome or the very last, let's say, milestone before reaching the goal. So if you rotate the goal tree, it would be the very last milestone before converging to the goal. And uh, as we already said, it's a very limited set of this high-level systems uh, outcome. So we have no dependency on too many critical success factors, and we have this handy um, uh, dashboard. And uh, the equation here, here, you cannot really make out, is the goal is equal of the sum of the several, several critical success factors. So we, you need to have them all in order to fulfill the goal. Next are the necessary conditions, which are tasks, activities, and intermediate results. As you have seen, you have all layers of them, so each time, well, it's like an inter intermediate objectives, and probably you will come back to that, to that notion uh, later on. 
and uh, at some point it's an entering argument. So when you reach the bottom, well, there is no more necessary condition. And probably the, the question will arise, how deep we should develop the goal tree? We can give it away right away. Yeah. So there are two kinds of answers. If we are dealing with a strategic level, we do not want to bore, especially if we are working on a project and we have to sell, for instance, to investor or to a higher authority. We do not want to bore them with the, the petty details. Okay? So we stop at a certain level knowing that it goes much deeper. But now, if you are dealing with more um, operators or uh, exe uh, execu um, execution level, you have probably to go deeper because those kind of people need to know more precisely what they are supposed to do to contribute to the book. If you stop with some abstract concepts, they probably not very at ease with that. Mm -hmm. So and you, they, you and need they to go may not deeper. see where they fit into the process. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So you have to distinguish who is your audience? Are you talking to a more higher level uh, audience or somebody needing more detail? We have this structure. So this is a repeat you are now quite familiar with. And we need to connect all the elements in the logical hierarchy. And uh, here we say separate wheat from the chaff and the, uh, what is more specifically to understand what is important from what is not, and uh, also provide these connections from the necessary condition to the goal. If I rephrase uh, this in my way, what I really like with the goal tree, and this from the beginning, is when I realize that the goal tree is filtering out the nice to have. The goal tree is a logical analysis of the situation. What you need to have and what does not comply to in order to have, I must have, in order to achieve, I must have. What does not fit into this structure is a nice to have and it must be put away because you cannot afford to burn your precious resources on things which are not really necessary to achieve your ambition. And why I really liked this, uh, this uh, additional benefit of the goal tree. First, uh, because I do not know another tool which can separate this easily, the nice to haves from the necessary conditions. If you are familiar with Hoshin Canary, this is a lean tool, a lean management tool. Hoshin Canary, it's very easy to sneak in with some, uh, with some nice to haves. If you are smart enough to sell your nice to have, probably nobody will understand that you are putting in something which is not really necessary. This is one thing. The second thing, it's so easy to explain to people who come up with a nice to have that the rationale says it is not fitting into the tree. It is not me as a manager refusing your proposal, but the structure does not need it. And there is no way to say, yes, yes, it is in, in, uh, indispensable. No, it is not. It does not fit into the goal tree. Right. So the, here is a, another small example of the goal tree. It's not complete, but it's a way of starting it. It's uh, about a manufacturing company. So the, the goal is to be profitable, or it's another uh, way to saying we want to make uh, more profit now and in the future. And in order to have that, well, we have uh, three critical success factors. <laughs> which we, you can also use, as I said, as a dashboard. Okay? So you have to maximize your revenue, so you can monitor how the revenue are doing. You have to control costs. This is also an easy way of controlling if you are getting closer to your, uh, to your goal. And of course, you have to optimize inventory. And you may have others. So what usually comes up at that stage, more or less, is, yeah, but a goal tree, it's like a template. You can take it and just fill the blanks. I would not agree with that. Uh, first, uh, because probably there are more than these three uh, critical success factors. I would say at least I would, I would go for a fourth one, which is the distinct nature of the company you are trying to establish. If you are just doing this, 
how would you differentiate from your competitors? Okay, so in my point of view, it's probably a false one that gives you a more a taste of what you are really, or of the company you really are. And uh, the other reason why I would not uh, consider a goal tree as a template, uh, if you are taking a template, you are just taking somebody else's ambition and copy it. And my recommendation for anybody going for a project or an ambition to establish something is to go through the whole process. Even so, the outcome will be very similar to an existing one, but they have to leave the way to construct it because it is their ambition and it can be it cannot be just copied from a template this is my point of view take it or leave it but i share it with you i'd like just to come back to peter's uh, remark uh, this might you might you may experience it uh, when building your goal trees especially when you work in pairs or with um, other people from the same organization discussing what the goal is, what the critical success factors are, and later on with the necessary conditions. And you will experience at some point there is a discussion, is it a goal, is it the critical success factors, as Bill said, but you will have the same between the critical success factors and the necessary conditions. It happens all the time. So what I would say with my limited experience until now, when I facilitate this, I let go for the first time and I let the time or additional information help to structure and once people get to, to look at their goal tree with some distance the picture becomes clearer but it's from what I saw quite normal to have this confusion at least at the beginning mm -hmm. because you are quite creative putting some uh, some entities on the on the tree mm -hmm. so it takes some time to to find its place part, part of the problem is that this is a very novel uh, approach for most people. They have a hard time wrapping their brain around it. And so I always suggest in order, don't get bogged down in the details. Mm -hmm. Go through it. Get something up there that is the best that you can at the moment. And then it may the words may not be quite right, but you're not aiming for perfection the first time. You're aiming to get something up there that other people who have a different perspective on the system can look at and say, well, I think you're a little off here. What about this? And this is like the comment that Peter made about, well, what about, I mean, profitability? What about it's, if, if this other factor here? Uh, isn't that really a higher thing? Well, this is what prompts this, is having something up there in the first place. You can look at it and say, is profitability really a necessary condition to get this non-profit statement goal up here? And if the answer is yes, okay, then profitability doesn't need to be the goal, but it damn well needs to be a critical success factor. If you decide that profitability is the goal, then maybe whatever was up there reverts down to being a critical success factor. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so coming back to this slide. It is about constructing goal trees. And as you can see, we have here question marks with dotted lines. These are placeholders. So what does it mean? There is an optimal mo uh, number of people proposed to build goal trees. First of all, they must be knowledgeable about the system. If you don't know nothing, you are not likely to construct a goal tree. You might be the facilitator if you know how to proceed, but you will not give any input about the details, okay? Mm -hmm. So the people constructing the goal tree, at some moment, they might have the no, intuition no. something is missing, but they, just for that, they are not sure, or it's not their speciality. So they will leave a placeholder and later call in the people who know to complete the trees. So this is the signification of the question marks and the dotted line. I go to the next example. This is a sales department uh, goal tree. And uh, here you have a structure you understand now. The only difference is you have a low positioned necessary condition. It is low just in the picture. It does not mean it is less necessary or less important than the others. But what is important here, it's feeding two different branches which can happen. 
because this question also arises when we start with gold we can we have a necessary condition feeding more than one upper necessary condition yes you can there is no no limitation a gold tree is a fractal object you must have the big corporate gold tree and it has the traditional structure but at some point for instance this critical success factor to the corporate goal is the goal of let's say the one of the department of the corporate all right and then they have different critical success factors than the corporation has but it is also true for example for uh, a workshop in a factory okay your department has a gold tree but some of the necessary condition of this gold tree is the goal of the underlying structure okay so i'd like to to call this fractal because independently of the scale you are looking at your gold tree you always have the same structure we can also use the image of the russian dolls you open one you have a smaller one and the other one the other one